Hi everyone, my name is Gordon Smith. Uh, I'm the product manager for Oracle REST Data Services. Welcome to the quick brief on ORDS and the new SQL JSON database functions, uh, part one. So what has happened is um, in Oracle Database 12C, uh, Oracle introduced some very significant new capabilities, JSON capabilities in the database. And in particular, this includes new, uh, a number of new SQL JSON functions that are very, very useful if you are using ORDS. So I'm going to be going through those in, in two parts. Uh, first, which is uh, this uh, quick brief, I'm going to be talking about mapping nested JSON objects to and from multiple relational tables. So I'm going to be working through an example where I have a JSON purchase order, which is a nested object that contains purchase order items nested within that a uh, larger uh, purchase order item uh, object, and I'm going to be uh, inserting those into two relational tables, a top-level purchase order PO table and then a child PO items table. And then I'm also going to be talking about doing the reverse, and it's generating the, that adjacent purchase order nested object by querying the PO table and PO items table. So that is what this quick brief is about. I uh, also recommend that you listen to the part two, which is about storing JSON in the Oracle database. So this has some performance advantages in some cases and also uh, allows agile development techniques uh, for faster and more incremental releases, again, in some cases for uh, contained, self-contained application components. But anyway, first, uh, let's do part one topic. So again, this is mapping nested JSON objects to and from multiple relational tables. So this is the example I'm going to be wa walking through. So on the left, I have a JSON purchase order. And this has uh, all the elements that you kind of would expect. It's a purchase order number, it's a requester, it's a cost center, there's a, an address, which is a nested object, which contains the street and the city and so on. And then there's a line item um, uh, element, which is an array of items uh, that make up the purchase order. So for each item, we have the item number, we have uh, the, the part description, which has uh, a description and unit price and unit and code, and then a quantity for that item, and then another item. So this is an array, it can have no elements, or it can have any number of elements. It's a, it's a JSON array. So what we want to be able to do, and I'll be showing you first, is to insert this into relational tables. Um, so we have two tables, a purchase order, a parent table, and then a purchase or PO items child table. So the PO table has all the elements that you would, again, it would expect, a PO number, a requester, a cost center. It has uh, an address, which is kind of is on, a, on a flat level. Um, does it's not you could use Oracle object capabilities to, to uh, make this in a, an embedded object containing uh, these uh, individual components of the address but here's it's a flat level um, we also have the table the PO items table which is uh, again all the things you, you would expect a PO number the item number description quantity and so on so in Oracle database 12c uh, there are a number of new uh, SQL JSON functions, and I'll be talking about just a, a few of those. Uh, the, a really powerful one is JSON table, and I'll be showing you an example, a detailed example of that, that maps a nested JSON uh, object to relational tables. And then there are two functions, uh, JSON object and JSON array ag, uh, which does the reverse, that is maps relational data in a hierarchical parent-child relationships and creates or generates a nested JSON objects. So the strengths of these functions are, um, first, you don't need anything else. Uh, in particular, there's no JSON parser software to install. There are a couple uh, PL SQL JSON par uh, parsers that are out there, one from Oracle, um, and also one, uh, an open source product, they're both pretty good, uh, both uh, uh, pretty widely used. Uh, but some advantages of using these uh, SQL JSON functions is that you don't need to install anything. It's all there, ready to go. It has a very simple declarative code approach, so there's no nested loops to decipher. So the code is this cleaner, simpler. 
Uh, it's simple, easy to understand code when, when the mapping you are doing is simple. And I'll be going through talking to you about some examples of that in a second. But it also has um, powerful, sophisticated capabilities that the JSON parsers just don't have for handling more complex mappings as well. So some of the things that it handles, uh, Oracle supports nulls for, uh, in the database. JSON nulls are often represented by missing elements. That's fairly common, but JSON also supports nulls. But you have to somehow map between these two different things, and uh, the SQL JSON function do that. Uh, uh, JSON supports Booleans. Oracle database does not, so you need some way of mapping uh, common representations of Booleans in the Oracle database, which are often like strings with true or false or ones and zeros. And again, the, the SQL JSON functions provide uh, simple ways of doing that. Also need to be able to map uh, names. So Oracle has case insensitive names, JSON has case sensitive names, and you just may want to have different names in the database than you have in your JSON objects, but again, these, these functions provide very simple ways of being able to map from one to the other. In addition to these basic things, it also has sophisticated mechanisms when mapping is more complex. And in particular, um, a great strength of JSON, and, and one of the reasons you want to use JSON, particularly to store uh, JSON in the database, is that it supports agile development techniques. It allows you to have small teams of developers iterate more frequently um, to produce new functionality faster, and this involves evolving the schema of or the structure of the JSON object. And you want to allow application developers to do this, but you don't want to break your code. So you want to be able to have ways of, of, of writing code that does mapping that won't be broken as that code, as the JSON evolves. So for example, say you're starting off with just a phone number and um, for an employee or for a, 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 you know, delivering a purchase order or whatever it is, but over time you may want to evolve to storing uh, multiple kinds of phone numbers. You have, mobile numbers, and line, uh, uh, line uh, numbers, and Skype numbers, and fax numbers, and so on. And you also may want to have things like, what is the preferred number to use, or what is preferred for given time of day? And so over time, what used to be a simple, simple scalar in a JSON ob um, object or in a, a column in a database may evolve into a much more complex thing. Uh, but uh, the uh, JSON SQL functions that are, or SQL JSON functions that are in the database have functionality for doing that. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but just to kind of point you in the right direction, there are things called the wrapper clauses and the ordinality columns. Those are things to look at in the documentations and the various blog posts, uh, the blogs that are out there um, that, that talk about the JSON functionality in the database. So next, to go in a little deeper, uh, let's look at that example uh, I showed you before where you have a JSON purchase order and you want to map that to a PO table and a PO items table. So here's the code for doing that. This is code that you would put in the ORDS handler for doing a post uh, that is an insert of this JSON uh, purchase order into these two tables. So. Uh, one of the nice things that ORDS does is that it can deliver the, uh, the content of the body of the post call, which would be your JSON purchase order document, into a bind variable called a colon body. And the first thing we're going to do is take that bind variable, which has this JSON purchase order, and assign it to a local blob variable. We're then going to do two inserts. First, the insert into the PO table, and then a little bit later here, the insert into the PO items table. And these are inserts as selects, and the fun key function is JSON table. And so what this function does, that takes the uh, JSON object, which is in the LPO uh, local variable, and it's going to map the columns of, or the elements of that into database columns. So we have database columns, PO number, requester, and so on. And then we have the, the, the JSON elements, which is basically has this path expression says, give, give me the value of the thing that's in the JSON document uh, with the name PO number or the name requester and so on, and map them into the corresponding uh, relational column. So that's pretty straightforward for handling the parent PO table. 
It's a little bit more involved for dealing with the child PO items table. It's very similar in that it's a select star from JSON table. Again, you have the, the JSON object. One of the um, co complexities that you have is that in JSON, you don't have foreign key references. So there's nothing in this uh, array of line items that refers to the purchase order number. It's just embedded within it. So the foreign key reference is implied. It's, you don't need it with a JSON, but you do need it if you want to map it to relational objects because it's part of the primary key of the PO item. So you need to know what the purchase order number in the topmost part of this JSON object is. So here we're able to extract that from the topmost element and then go into the array. So we have the special um, uh, term nested and this is the path that nested is going to look into. It's going to look into all the elements um, or the uh, array elements that are part of line items in the JSON object and it's going to go through just like it did above here with the purchase order table. It's going to go through all of the columns in the PO item table, item number, and part description, and so on, and extract them using this uh, path uh, uh, syntax uh, to be able to get at the value that's in the item number and the part description, and so on. So that does the inserts in those two tables. It's a transaction. It's PO SQL, so you have a commit uh, to be able to commit that as a transaction, and then you're done. So. If you want more details on how to do that, I've written up a blog post uh, called Inserting Nested JSON Objects into Relational Tables with Ords that goes through the exact example I just showed you, but has more detail. So it shows you, for example, the calls that Ords needs you to do to define this as a post handler uh, for the, uh, the, the resource, the, the purchase order resource, and gives you other details and so on. I also have another blog post that shows you the reverse. So this is generating uh, the nested JSON from the relational data. Again, this is using the um, uh, JSON object and the JSON array ag uh, functions. Um, and then lastly, I have a, yet another talk po blog post that talks about uh, why this is important, why having this functionality is really useful. And basically, it comes down to um, uh, with, with REST, it REST is a, is a stateless protocol. So if you want to do something like insert a JSON object that goes into multiple tables, you, you need to do that in one call. So you really need this functionality as some way of being able to take data that needs to then be applied to multiple tables or the reverse, take data from multiple tables and convert that into a JSON object in one call. So this, this is a very powerful and simple and easy to use way of doing that. Um, it also though gives, because you're storing the data relationally, it gives you the ability to um, do piecewise updates. So one of the problems if you're storing data in the database as JSON is those objects can get pretty big. And if you just need to update a component of that, um, it, it typically involves reading in the whole object and then update a little part of it and then writing the whole thing back. And if your JSON objects are get big, um, this can be a major performance uh, uh, problem. So uh, this, this general approach gives you the best of both worlds. So it allows you to deal with multiple tables very easily when you need to do that, but when you want to just deal with a component of a larger object, particularly a piecewise update, you can do that in, in a kind of a regular old relational approach of just doing the one table rather than everything, which is not something that you can do with most uh, data store technology that's out there that allows you to store JSON objects in the data store. So I have those three blog posts uh, for you with more detail. Uh, if you define the blog posts, um, just Google them in a lot of different ways. Uh, Gordon Smith, Oracle blog will do it. New Generation Database Access blog will do it. Um, and you can find those three blog posts and a lot of other ones that I think you will find useful. You also might want to follow me on Twitter. Um, so here's my Twitter um, account. And one of the things I do with the Twitter account is I uh, announce new blog posts when they are available. So this is a way you can find out when new things are, new things are added. So um, 
I hope that was useful. And again, a reminder, take a look at part two, uh, which talks about um, uh, using uh, SQL JSON functions to help you store uh, JSON in the database. Okay, thank you.